his, his imperial majesty is not is not uh, the, 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 about emanation and emanation philosophy right. and reincarnation. I'm not saying that these are bad words in the sense that we to never no. ever like like no. if we use these words, but but there's some things that we need to understand okay. in a sense about these particular words. For example, incarnation. I was really saying about how you, with the way you had explained it at one time, um, I understood it, but I was saying how to use the term. Um, you know, as far as describing certain things in 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 in, in, in ignorance, not under, overstanding, and I come exactly, from exactly, exactly. Well, but that's yeah. exactly what I'm saying. Is that being okay? Oh, we have to define the darkness when we talk yeah. about darkness, because if we don't define that darkness, we're gonna get caught up on um, you know, Gentile, you know, Gentile right. misunderstanding. Right. We're gonna be lost right. in translation. So sometimes what we do is. We'll replace light for darkness, darkness for light, or we'll say this is right is wrong, wrong is right, just to kind of spite on a certain level the so-called proverbial white man. And that's why I said that that our problem, right, as as the lost sheep, as black people, is not a white man problem, but our problem is a God problem, right? It it, it all basically it all basically um 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 starts and since and ends with, you know, whether we are going to get back to, like, how the situation. Mimi used to say something years ago when we first met. We would talk about situation, you know, when we just was, in a sense, courting each other. And she would say, you know, like when we talk about, like, people or if, or if two people have a problem, we always say, well, how did the situation begin? How did, yeah. how did it begin? Because when you start to look at how it began, and on a certain level, though, she was not being Bible or whatnot, and she was coming through great tribulation too, you know, saying in her own life and everything like that, it was still something that was very grounded. Like even those of us who yeah. might still be unrepentant and lost, the Holy Spirit is still speaking in us, and there is still yeah. something valuable in us yeah. that Satan is trying to move as much of, as much of heaven and earth as, as they can, right, right. To, to stop us from coming to that overstanding, because once we come to that overstanding, we are free. Now, the whole process about incarnation, there is incarnation means simply, simply. Incarnation basically refers to that famous verse where it says, and the word, right, became flesh, right? Yeah. And the word, now, of course, that is exclusive to, uh, on a certain level, or at least we believe it's exclusive to Yeshua HaMoshiach, to Yesus Christos. But as Christian, as, as newborns, as, as beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, right, even as little <laughs> babes in Christ, we also have to grow up to him. We have to allow Christ to be formed in us. And guess what? Yeah. And guess or know this. It is through that very same process and that very same application of the word. So it's almost as yeah. the word was sent to this din Gurmarium and why Mary is so praised and so honored, right, in addition to her or even beyond her blackness, beyond yeah. her race, because that, that didn't mean nothing in a sense, um, you know, that didn't mean nothing in a sense to her. You understand? Right. The fact that she was black and everything like that, you know, because this is before white supremacy. This is yeah, before the... You have to, um, yeah, because they weren't thinking in terms of that, but we, being in the West, we, we, we have to take that into consideration. We being um, in this, I, I mean, not just even the West, but we being in this, um, you know, we being in this dispensation, we being in this yeah. dispensation, in other words, in other words, we're fulfilling a particular dispensation. In other words, when we look back at Yeshua, right, from a so-called um, um, time, space, continuum of, of, of history and time, that was like, say, yeah. roughly 2,000 years ago from our Ethiopic um, time um, calculation. But now for the past 400 years, we're in a particular dispensation that's impossible for us to understand it unless we go to his word. So where we make our yeah. biggest error is that we don't go to the word and we don't try to um, understand it in context with his word. Thus, comes once again his majesty statement, Hala Selassie's statement of um, the question, what makes you want to follow Christ? Now, how can God, right, and this is the question now, how can God, right, or God according to the Judeo-Christian um, biblical interpretation, in other words, how can God, or, or, or evidence, how can God 
um, follow his son? See, that's a question there that we haven't been taught this from Gentile, white, Western um, theology. How can God follow his son, right? How can God follow his son? See, that, because we've been robbed in a sense or we've been, we're in a deficient state. We're in a spiritual AIDS condition. We're in a spiritual auto, immune, deficiency, sin, and syndrome. And I mean auto means self. Auto means self, right? Auto basically means like the ego or the self. Immune, immune means salvation. Deficiency yeah. means lack. And syndrome means a continuing wow. cycle of, 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 of shit, in a sense, continual cycle of, of, of sin and error. Almost, we can say, a generational, a generational curse, right? Almost a generational curse. And this is exactly what we're in. So I had to ask myself, what did his majesty mean? If we say as Rastafari that his majesty, and we say his majesty is I and I God, from a Rastafari, and this is speaking exclusively, to Rastafari, yeah. because other folks yeah. will basically say, well, he was a good man, or I like this about yeah. him, I don't like this about him, and we can understand that. But for us who seem to have this spiritual calling or this spiritual um, cognition, we have to come to recognition. You know what I'm saying? We have a cognition. We seem to have this inborn knowledge or this inborn calling, but we don't understand this calling. This is why it says education is the key. And we're not talking about this material, worldly education, no. political education, but first, the first no. and foremost key for us as Rastafari is our spiritual education. And so it says in the latter days and times that God would visit all nations. And we know that from the Bible. We can look it up. God will visit all nation, and the Bible also says that God, for Old Testament, this is Old Testament, that God would shew his salvation. Yeah. Now, I don't know how folks want to interpret that, because some folks want to say, oh, well, that means this and that, and the next thing. Let me find the verse while, while, while I speak to the eye, right, um, that, okay. that, that says that, that God will, I think it says, shew, right, his salvation from a King James perspective is shew, not show. You understand? Those little details, you know, we need to, you know, figure out, you know, or remember. And let me see what verse comes up because I remember reading that, and then it became, became gradually. In other words, I'm giving you what probably took me maybe some weeks or months. You understand? Maybe it wasn't that long, but what it took a little while for me to really become conscious of over time. But it was, it was, it was blocking out everything else. It was blocking out, just like we would say, Rastafari, Selassie, and like Selassie alone, right? Therefore, in our study, we have to block out everything else other, other than the teaching of his majesty, right, than the gospel of his majesty and his right. word, right? And this is why I published the, um, the gospel of uh, the, the Gohim book, the gospel of Hala Selassie book, right? And yeah. I, I chose to include in it, only those relevant speeches or teaching of his majesty. Yes, I saw that. Right, so we can have that as a reference point, because even today, right now I'm talking to you and I have it in my hand. I have it in my hand because sometimes in this world, in this life, we become a little rusty on, on, you know, yeah. on the exact word or the exact word sound, and what we'll do is kind of like fake the funk sometimes, and we will improvise the saying, and then we'll say, oh, well, that's the same thing. But if we honor his majesty, we should at least go to what the, you know, what the translation or the most accurate translation, you know, has, 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 has said. So the first speech was when his majesty said the religion speech. I must admit that the religion speech of his majesty where he spoke on religion, where he says, however wise or however mighty a person may be, that means in whatever the person may glory in, right, or, or get puffed up in, he is like a ship, he or she, he generically, he is like a ship or she is like a ship without a rudder if he is without God. A rudderless ship is at the mercy of the waves and the wind. That means these situations that we go through, right, that blow us in this direction and that, drifts wherever they take it, and if they arise, they whirlwind. That means a real situation, right? It is smashed against the rocks, and it becomes as if it never if, if it has never existed. It is our firm belief that a soul, no, so imagine he's not saying a person, he's not saying Ethiopian people, he's not saying European no. people, he's not saying black people, white people, Rastafari people, non-Rasta, he's saying a soul, 
a soul that is with, without Christ. So see, a lot of people think they need Christ as far as, you know, on their bumper sticker, or they might think they need Christ with a cross around their neck, or they need Christ, a, a black Jesus up on their wall. But what we need Christ, right, if we can understand Christ, is in our soul is bound to meet yeah. with no better fate. And I, I kept the going. Inner man. I kept, the inner man. Yeah, I kept going over this, but then I came to a point where I had to turn to the Bible because his majesty said, for my part, I glory in the Bible. So when we glory in anything other than the Bible in a true and a living way, that means that when I'm in a situation, I've learned to what word of God, what word in the scripture, what, what testimony of Christ, what testimony of his majesty helps me build a bulwark, right, a support, a strength against this situation that I'm going to, right. through. What word, and, and many times we're in a deficit or a deficiency, and we're in a yeah. deficiency of his word, we're in a deficiency of his salvation, and we're on autopilot, we're on ego pilot, you understand, and wow. we're going to go through the same old situation, the same old wow. shit over and over again. And I'm sure that whatever this thing is called, AIDS or whatever like that, I know this from studying science that AIDS is a lack of your immune, your immune yeah. system. So the word yeah. of God becomes as our, according to our belief, our faith, our admittance, it becomes our immune system. So, so this is why some of us sometimes and many others, every old little shit of Babylon can throw us off our horse, can knock us down. We can get beat up. We will blame everybody. But what we won't recognize, it's our own lack of faithfulness. That's what it says. Many are called, few are chosen. I always thought, John, why you only choose a few? That's what the pastors and the preachers teach. But what the word yeah. teaches is that few are chosen because a few choose his way, God's way, Christ's way, what the Bible is showing of the way, the truth, and the life, and they always make excuses. Well, we can't do it nowadays because this is the political situation or, or such and such. Here's the two verses right here. Here's the two verses right here. It is Psalm 50 and 23, right? He says, um, okay, this is the salvation. It says, um, God will shew his salvation. Okay, well, well, these are two good scriptures right here. Let me just go through it. Um, but it's not the scripture I was looking for. But it says, whoso, whoso offereth praise, which is Isis, right, glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright. Now, that's a key right there. We got to order. It's not that Jah is going to come down from Holy Mount Zion or from the Oranos or the Orion or the heavenly constellation. He says that, that we here on earth, Right, we must order our conversation. Conversation doesn't mean our just our talking. It means our walk, our our as we would say in Rastafari, our liberty, a right. A right means not what's pleasing in our own eyesight, but 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 for Rastafari, chiefly what is pleasing to His Majesty. So if Christ is not in it, if the Bible is not in it, in a living, in a new and living way, then we're just lying to ourselves. Because He says, "Will I shoe?" Will I shew the salvation of God? Now, salvation is a key word because we know that salvation is Yeshua. So another way of reading this is that I will shew the, the Yeshua of God. Does this sound like the Christ of his majesty? Does this sound like the, the interpretation, the liberty, the manifestation of Christ? In fact, like I said, I would not be anywhere, anywhere near into the Bible or Jesus Christ or any of this talk or conversation for any reason whatsoever if his majesty had not convicted my heart. You understand? Right. Because because I was gonna give up on his majesty for nothing. I give it up, you know, for, for, for nothing. But then I recognized that I was called, but I wasn't choosing his way. I was still choosing to look at it right. in my way and not in his way. So this is where all these bumps along the road you know, saying all these what 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 we call as Rastafari, New Jerusalem School of Hard Knocks. You know what I mean? You know, we get these hard knocks until we, until we humble ourselves and grow. Right. This is why the teaching, I feel, is so very important on a level, not just I, but others also who get it, yeah. to share it in whatever high or low way, right, that they, yeah. you know, that they can. Um, hold on for a moment. Hold on for a moment. Let me see if I can get this verse right here. Let me take our shoe, right, that God will shoe, 
right? It might you know, be that's Psalm, Psalm 50, so, Psalm 20. 50, 20, 23, 50 right. and um, 50 and 23, right? Okay. 